Uh, not watching the Patriots anymore. They're done. <laughs> oh, I hate when that happens, don't you? Yeah, I'm a Redskins fan. I never <laughs> okay, see them in the playoffs. Okay, here's my question. <laughs> um, I, I actually have seen you in your office, and uh, we've oh. talked a few times. Yes. But my brother-in-law was just diagnosed with stage 4 melanoma. All right. And had a uh, the excised uh, tumor from his chest about the size of the finger. Okay. I, his, they tell me his doctor tells him on a scale of the point scale that they use, sure. uh, the highest they go is a 10.2, and David is an 11. Okay, so he's, so he's got himself a, a, a deep tumor. Did they find that it, that it went anyplace else other than local uh, invasion? Well, they're well, stage going to four, for you know, the PET scan and the brain scan. Okay, PET scan is actually the most important part of it because you'll see the smaller lesions with a PET scan. The way a pet, and, and this is going to lead into what I'm going to suggest that you do. Okay, a PET scan, okay, works by looking at, uh, it's a type of radiograph that looks at cellular metabolism. And what you do is you're looking for the metabolism of sugar, glucose, okay, radio labeled glucose. So what you do is you give it intravenously. You know, okay, then you wait around a while, an hour or whatever, and it'll accumulate in tissues, in cells, in clusters that are growing faster than the, the clusters around it. So you'll see uh, like a candle in a dark room if you have a metastatic lesion using this radio-labeled uh, sugar product. Now, what, what, so you're going to say, well, okay, who cares? Well, your brother-in-law cares. Okay, no, I never say who cares. Oh, yeah, but anything you can do to lower the transport of uh, glucose into the cell is going to translate into his longevity. And you're going to go, what the heck is he talking about? And it's something that I chat about a lot, okay? And it's called metformin. Now, if you if you do this for the doctor up in Massachusetts, because sometimes they don't read a lot up there, okay? And I want you to go on a website called P-U-B-M-E-D. That's pubmed.gov. Now, you paid for this in your tax dollars. Okay, the good news is in Massachusetts, there's not a lot. They don't pay a lot of tax there anymore. You used to pay a lot, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it depends on whether you're, well, no, there I'm you gonna, go. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to go down that road. Okay. PubMed.gov. I'm actually a Florida resident. I'm oh. only here for the, for the, for the winter. Are you I'm nuts? headed to Florida shortly. Oh, okay, good for you. Well, welcome, uh -huh. well oh, the premature welcome back, okay, because, you know, it's the sort of place you go to visit. I went, <clears throat> last time I was in Boston, you know, I appeared in, in court. On behalf of a friend of mine, you know, who's kind of interesting, the the, uh, the folks over at Mass General stole his child from him. Okay, they were actually going to make a movie about it, but well, that's another story. We'll talk about that after we're done with your uh, brother-in-law's melanoma, because that's actually more compelling. Because the story that I have will keep. He may not if we don't uh, start dealing with it. Metformin. What you do is you go on PubMed.gov and do a search, a literature search for metformin. That's spelled M-E-T-F-O-R-M-I-N. Leave a space, put a plus, and then write cancer. Okay, and you'll see over 2,200 articles have been published to this moment on the relationship between metformin and cancer. Now, now you start knocking it down a little bit. Okay, you can do cancer prevention, cancer longevity, but the, the search I want you to do, okay, is metformin and melanoma survival. Met, uh, metformin and melanoma prevention. Okay, and you're going to see four articles pop up. And these are all very recent, within the past year and a half, two years. Okay, and so for, for a medication that they will give away for free at Publix. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't have Publix up in, in, in Massachusetts. However, it's still very, very cheap up there. You know, you're talking about a 5 or $10 medication. Okay, will increase, hit the likelihood that he will respond. And how does this stuff work? It works through a, a pathway called AMPK, uh, which... Is, is the uh, tail end of the insulin receptor. So the insulin receptors become uh, more and more resistant to the insulin, which means that they'll suck up less and less sugar. And cancer cells and normal cells have one principal difference. Okay, one difference. And that's, the, well, other than the fact that one grows like heck and the other one doesn't. And that's that they, they use glucose as the principal fuel. So if you can starve these cancer cells with metformin, they die. It's called apoptosis. So I take metformin regardless. I don't have I don't have diabetes. That's what it's principally used for. Okay, and I use it for cancer prevention. So when people have sufficient uh, renal reserves, if they have enough intelligence to understand what I'm telling them and the wisdom to take the advice, I put just about everybody, every adult, on metformin.
Okay, what's the worst thing it's going to do if you've got somebody that's got uh, diabetic uh, kidney disease? You know, if you read the literature, it says it's a bad idea. What I'm finding is I do it anyway. Okay, and then the renal if the renal disease gets better, you know, hmm. it, it, you know the, the diabetes is what kills the, the kidneys, not the other, not the not the metformin. So, but that's what your brother-in-law needs to be doing. This stuff costs nothing. Okay, absolutely nothing other than a little little bit of uh, nausea, a little bit of diarrhea that's temporary, and a little headache that's even more temporary. There are no downside uh, risks to this. So does that make sense, Kathy? I, I will find out. I'm going to mention it to him because uh, I don't hear of anybody else around here talking about metformin. They the won't. Way that you do. No, it's it, it, they. I, and I don't. I don't get it. Okay, because the literature is out there. All you have to do is look. You know, why shouldn't something that's free for the taking? Okay, be mm -hmm. something that, that you'd promote. I don't get it. Nobody takes you out to lunch to teach you about metformin. Okay, and, that, and that's a fact. So what do you do? I wouldn't go tell them about it because that, that's not strong enough. This is a life and death situation. What you do is you go to PubMed, find the uh, references. And there are only four that you have to look at for this one. The four as of this past Thursday, when I was the, which was the last time I looked at this, because mm -hmm. oddly enough, that was the last time in my practice this came up. So I see this not infrequently. You print out the abstracts. They're one page long. They cost you nothing. You walk into the doctor's office with all four and go, oh, by the way, can we give this a try? Hmm. Okay, what? how would you answer that? Well, yeah, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Nothing. Uh, costs nothing. And the doc, the doc is inevitably going to say, well, I've never heard of that, which is really, that's not the sort of thing that a, a learned person would say. Okay. Right. Why? You know, I'm going to brag about my ignorance. Okay. But what you should be saying is how very interesting. I, I did not know that. Let me research it, which is something that I say with some nauseating regularity because you can't know everything. It's just impossible. You got to keep studying, got to keep reading, which is I study or read uh, the medicine about two to three hours a day. It's the only way hmm. I can keep up with it. You know, it's a lot of stuff out there. <laughs> All you know? right. So what are we you got? got? Any questions? Uh, you got Kathy? any follow-up questions on that? Well, she's down. Oh, no, there she is. Okay, go. Kathy, I thought, I thought you were down. <laughs> Almost done. All right. His father, brain cancer. Okay. His sister, colorectal cancer. All right. His brother, my former husband, is now deceased. Okay. Uh, Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. All right. I'm just... The odds, I'm terrified for them because I've we've been through this several times already. Okay. Well, what do you think prognosis for somebody that has you, such you, a history? You can't. Okay. Oh. You know, for starters, you know, thinking uh, prognosis is like giving up before you start. Okay. What you do is you live every day as it is. Okay. And while his, you know, the likelihood of him. Um, Oh, let's say living to a, to a very old age is probably a lot smaller than it would be if he didn't have the melanoma. He could have dropped out of a heart attack anyway. So you can't really think about it that way. But I'm going to suggest a couple things to th that family cluster. One, what it, there, there's not one single cancer that's doing it. So this is different types of cancer. Mm -hmm. What this tells me is they have an immune system issue. Okay, because it's the immune system that protects you from these cancers. Okay, I just went through a procedure that's making it really hard for me to talk right now. Okay. And what I did is I went in on Friday to my dermatologist, okay, and they painted my face with a levulinic acid, let it cook for 90 minutes, okay, which it wasn't so bad except for all the screaming kids in this office, right? And then they stuck me for four minutes and 20 seconds under a blue lamp. You kind of felt like bacon in a frying pan for four minutes and 20 seconds, okay? Oh, and now man. the skin on my face, which has turned like a, this a rusty brown, is falling off in sheets, okay? So my lips are kind of, you know, it's really miserable, okay? But the reason I did this, okay, because here in Florida, as you know, okay, skin cancers run rampant. You can't avoid the, the sun exposure. It's just not going to happen. And the last thing that you want to do is to die of a preventable illness. So this is my second treatment for this thing. So the patients tomorrow are going to be in for a big treat. I'm going to look like I've been dragged behind a, a pickup truck by my feet, okay? But you do what you can to keep the um, the system healthy so with regards to the immune system what do you do to, to improve the immune system function the immune system is the most complicated organ system that we have it's not the heart it's not the brain it's mm. the immune system okay it's 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 the most dynamic the most interesting of all the the organ systems that we've gotten it's one of the least well understood but it's extraordinarily sensitive to deficiencies in certain trace minerals and vitamins you know, if you're if you're deficient in zinc and selenium, if you're if you're uh, deficient in magnesium in particular, okay, the immune system goes to heck. Why is it that we tell people, oh, you've got a cold, you need to take zinc? Well, why? 
okay? Because the immune system is what's short. You know, if you're smart, you take the zinc so you don't get sick, okay? Mm -hmm. You keep the immune system cooking. So what do you do with the rest of the family? Point this out to them. Okay, vitamin D3, not to be confused with D2, especially the prescription D2, which is A, expensive, and B, stupid, because it, your body has to convert it to D3 for it to work. Okay, so D3 reduces your risk for cancer all sorts by 50%. So they need to be looking at their, at their uh, dietary intake. They need to be looking at the quality of what they're bringing in and increase their survivability by dealing with those sorts of things that you can influence directly and genetics is not one of them you can't according to current technology change your parents or your grandparents uh, you'd like to change your kids okay but you can't okay but you can change what goes into your system